Alright guys, welcome to the fifth episode of Below the Bar. In this episode, expect to find out what it takes to complete a Tough Mudder, why we have no respect for Arsenal Football Club, and how you can stay lean whilst boozing this summer. Let's get into it. Right. Welcome back. We're back in, another episode, been off the cuff this week, <laughs> and a bit of a weird dynamic going on, because this is also a pre-drinks. Yeah, this is true. So, now that we're post-marathon... We're going to start interspersing drinking into the podcast. Yeah, which could end badly. Yeah, so as this as this progresses through the episode, it might get more and more loose. Loose. So, a bit of background context. It's May Bank holiday, mm. the Sunday, the weather's shit, that's not going to deter us. <laughs> We're still going strong. It's about, what time is it? Four. It's five minutes past four. Yeah. A bit early to start drinking, but it's bank holiday, so it's not. So, yeah, so any excuse, basically. We've started on the waters but uh, we're going to progress to the stronger stuff as we get through. Yes. So, this week's episode is all about obstacle course races. Yes. So, a bit of background. Uh, we've done... Is it, I've done three Tough Mudders. You've done more? Or You've done, done two. Yeah. I've done three. <clears throat> okay, so between us, we've done five Tough Mudders, but that's the only one of the obstacle course races we've part, part eight to. So, I think there are... There are many others that you can go and do, aren't there? So yeah, so we'll we'll cover them individually, mm. but as a rough generalisation, in the past decade or so, there's been a steep rise in the popularity of what of, what are termed obstacle course races. Yeah. So I'm a big fan. Yeah. So am I. I think they're great. I think they're good. I think they're inclusive. We're a big <clears> fan <throat> of inclusivity on this podcast. Yeah. No gatekeeping. No gatekeeping. <laughs> Everyone's welcome. Yeah, and also I think just a little bit more enjoyable than a, a standard run or race. You know, you know we've done plenty of um, half marathon races, now marathon, like just running events, and they they're great and they're good atmosphere and all the rest of it. But it's just running and it's a bit, bit yeah. dry, a bit boring. Well, I think this is, I think obstacle course races have filled the void that like organised running events have left. Yeah, in that true. they're not that accessible. It's kind of only open to the running community, but you can do a tough mudder at kind of any ability level. Yeah, specifically tough mudder, I think, because it's less about it being a race and more about it just being a course to get through. Yeah. So whether you do it at kind of almost walking pace and try and get through the obstacles if you want, because you can walk around them, can't you? Yeah. So like, if you can, you can have a crack at the obstacle, walk around it if you need to you can kind of walk run to the next one, which is in like half a mile. So because they're so um, kind of such regular intervals, the obstacles, that it makes it a lot more interesting because you, you haven't got to run then for four miles or half an hour before you go and do something different than running. You've got to wait probably four minutes, five minutes, and then you've broken up your, your run. So exactly. it's pretty good. Part that thought for a second. Yeah. First... Get a bev on the go. Absolutely. For the visually impaired, I'm now reaching into the fridge in the bar <laughs> to get a bottle of Sol out. That's the beauty of doing this podcast in a bar. Yeah, you see, we've come we've come full circle now. We're actually utilising the fact that we have a bar Lovely. at our disposal. You've got a bottle opener. Yeah, I've got a cock bottle opener. Perfect. Again, for the visually impaired. On brand. Very, I've got many cock bottle openers <laughs> in this bar. Make of that what you will. <laughs> there you go, man. That'd be good on the mic, that one. Bah. That would have been loud. <laughs> on, on the headphone listeners. Right. The little matter We're in. of Helmet of the Week. Yes. Let's right. go. We've got you... a shared one this week. Well, yeah, we've got a shared one and it needs to be addressed. Yeah, this is going centre stage, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's not beat around the bush. The Helmet of the Week is Arsenal Football Club. Mm. Uh, and, and the many fans that surround on, on yeah, Arsenal Club. And anyone that chooses to associate themselves <laughs> with that tin pot club. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, currently, as of about five minutes ago, Man City leapfrogged Arsenal <laughs> in the table. For the first time for the this fir- season. Yeah, so, basically, the reason Arsenal are Helmet of the Week is because if they don't win the league this season, I think it will be the first time a team has spent more than 90% of the season top yeah. and have not won the league. And had such a points deficit. They, they were like over 10 points clear yeah, th- this point. is This is now the dictionary definition of a bottle job. Yeah, they've completely bowled. They've capitulated. And this week was the the game between Man City and Arsenal. Yeah. Which 
illustrated the golfing class between the two teams. Like, I was going into that game watching it thinking it's going to be pretty pretty even because I knew Arsenal had fallen off a cliff, but I thought that the occasion of that game would bring them back to it. They were just not at the races for the entire game. They were game. fucking woeful. That was painful. I mean, it was billed beforehand as kind of like the Prem game of the decade. That's what I mean, Because there was yeah. so much riding on it. And fucking talk about not turning up to the occasion. They really didn't. And then, yeah, Man City just absolutely blew them out of the water. They've then gone and won today. Yeah. Putting them ahead of them in the table. Yeah. And they've got a game in hand, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's but, curtains yeah, that's, for Arsenal now, basically. Fault, yeah. So all those Arsenal fans, and you know who you are, <laughs> that were playing their mouth for the entire season about how you've silenced the league yeah. and Arteta's king. Well, when you're struggling for Europa next season, <laughs> will he still be king? Is what yeah. I want to know. Rather fickle, Arsenal fans. They so are, aren't they? We'll see how that plays made, out. Made popular by the hats on Arsenal fan TV. Yeah, true. Well, I mean... But bottling it is the only way you can describe that. Ninety yeah. percent of the season, top of the league, and then and they haven't even won like one of the domestic cups or anything. No, so they're, they're tro- they've all pushed all their eggs into that basket. Yeah, and they've still fucked it. So they have been good, but then I think they've just got tired. They seem a bit like yeah, but you know, tired doth butter no parsley. Yeah, true. At the top of the Premier League, that's bollocks. Yeah, you know, yeah. As Neil Warnock would say, that's bollocks. <laughs> that's a load of bollocks. That is yeah. a load of bollocks. That's true. I mean, they just look like they've played too many games. They haven't got the squad depth, I don't think. To, yeah, to well, there's it. no excuses, though, because they're not competing on any more fronts anymore, though. No, like, no. like you said, they literally put all their eggs in the league basket. Yeah, and City have got two others on the fucking... They're on, on for the on treble. The trot, yeah. so, the proper treble. That's mad. Not that, the fake yeah. treble that Liverpool they, were chasing last season. I reckon they can, they can do it as well. Um, I reckon they will. Put a fiver on... Man City treble. What does that give you? Like 20 quid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shit, shit odds, to be fair. Because yeah. I left it till about a week ago yeah. to put it on. So. He's not much of a betting man. No, no. <laughs> he likes to be sure. Don't look too much into my betting history. Yeah, please. Uh, so that's Helmet of the Week. I think that's fairly justified. Yeah, fairly self-explanatory. So let's get back into obstacle course races then. Mm. What makes them so popular? Um. Well, they are expensive as well, but the the main barrier to entry is, is the expense. Yes. So like, I agree. The tough mudder we did, the first one was like over a hundred, like one hundred and twenty five quid or something. Yeah, I think again partially that was our own poor admin because oh, we left it, it quite late. last minute. But bear in mind, actually, to be fair, you get a lot for that money because they've got to put a massive event on. Like we were talking about last week with the running events, where you pay forty fifty quid and they don't really see anything for that for that money yeah with the exception of the London Marathon well yeah obviously. but like you do sign up for a lot of like halves and stuff and you're like what am I really paying for yeah you they just don't really put anything on you just line in the pockets of the running club that's organised it effectively like yeah. it's just it's a payday for them really there's not much of an expense for them so with an obstacle course race however there's a lot of expense that goes into that I would imagine you know, they've, got, they've got to put on the event they've got to put, you know well the Tough Mudder we did was 10 miles I think and every 12. half mile yeah, so every half mile was a uh, obstacle. So there's 24 obstacles. That's a lot of money. Because they're not shit obstacles. They're like, one of them was a shipping container full of fucking ice water. Yeah. That they had to keep at a specific temperature all day. We'll get on that, that. That costs a lot. Um, so And also, where else can you do these things? Yeah, true. You know, where else can you do a massive obstacle course race in like, the grounds? Well, of, they're uh, unique. Unique exactly selling point. So that's, what, that's probably what brings people to it. Because it's something, like you say, that... And actually, it's it's largely military esque, isn't it? You know, you commando crawling under stuff, and all a lot of the movements and a lot of the obstacles you're asked to do wouldn't be far fetched in a military environment. I think there's a lot of civvies who like to look into that world and have a go at it. I think that's maybe the uh, civvies do like getting thrashed a bit. That's maybe a bit of it. There's a market for that, definitely more and more so, isn't there? Yeah, because it's again something that. people look at and think they're, they're almost like do you reckon I would be able to do that and they're asking themselves and mm. then now they can go and almost test it don't they? I think there is something about humans also that like we've kind of become disconnected a bit with uh, in modern society we do just like getting stuck in every now and again yeah. a bit of a pressure valve yeah, a bit cathartic just to get muddy every now and again oh yeah definitely I think especially for a certain kind of person if you're um, if you've had any experience with that in the past and then you have now where you've got I don't know a 9 to 5 job normal job where you don't experience that anymore so say you play sports when you're a kid every weekend 
that you kind of time out of that when you're 18. That's what I mean. You become sanitised as you get older, don't you? Yeah. So, so it's nice to kind of re- nice excuse. It's to nice just... to reconnect with yeah. that side of you. Uh, so exciting. I think we've covered that. Yeah. That's one of the ones I had. TV exposure. Bear with okay. me. Popularised by shows like Ninja Warrior and Total Wipeout. Oh yeah, well that's which, like which grew an extreme end, isn't it? I guess it you is. Don't but really be... get that level of obstacle. On no, but own. like the people see shows like that and think oh, I want to crack at it particularly Ninja Warrior yeah and also it speaks to the immense popularity of like Ninja Warrior like people are drawn to even just watching that and so of course they want to go and give it a go yeah exactly you know. so TV exposure group orientated again touched yeah. on this in the CrossFit episode yeah. I think there's a lot to be said for group fizz yeah group suffering and again like with a lot of the obstacles, you can't get through them actually without a partner or a team or whatever. Which, They're designed that way where if you were to go around it by yourself, yeah. you just wouldn't be able to complete it. Which is where it differs from CrossFit because yeah. there is you know, a fundamental aspect of an obstacle course race is that you are going to have to cooperate at some point. Yeah, and you can't just shut your, you know, shut, put the blinkers on and just go yourself because it won't work. Which from a business perspective, he's fucking genius, by the way. Yeah. Because you're just going to get all like company team building activities. Yeah. Like companies will just throw money at you because it's like True. The, the perfect articulation of a team building event, isn't it? And they can put that through the business. Exactly. And, <laughs> and true. Uh, the, the the other thing is, if you're from a business perspective again, if you're like looking at doing it, say if I'm looking at doing it, and I know that I can't get around it by myself, I've got to then sell it to two of my friends. And I've got to get two other people involved who otherwise wouldn't have been involved. So yeah, exactly. If you sign up for a run, you can just do it by yourself. Yeah, so they're the main points I've got. Mm. I think we've covered yeah. most of them. I mean, it's just cool, isn't it? Let's be honest. I think it, it boils cool. down to the fact that it's different and it's cool. Yeah, and I think a little bit of like that challenge, like challenge mentality, it looks, it's something that you kind of don't really know what you're getting yourself into fully do you you don't know 100% what you're going to be asked no. to do so there's that little bit of because I think even if you're like a bit of a even if you're a bit of a tough mudder nors so to speak like they do vary the obstacles depending on which event you go to Yeah. so like you said you're never really sure what you're going to be faced with and then they vary the order of the obstacles so you can't really in your head say okay next is this Yeah. so it's, all, it's quite a challenging thing in that respect I think it's quite good and then also like you said there's not there's not really an emphasis on competition. So you're not going to scare off people that are kind of, what I would say, like fair weather, fair weather exercisers. Yeah, like anti com- anti competers. Yeah. You've got a lot of them, to be fair, and they are probably self selected out of the kind of CrossFit community potentially because a lot of CrossFit is, you know, who, whose time was better, whose lift was better. And organised running as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because they're yeah. just going to be put off by the, com- the competitive element of like a 10K or like mm. a half marathon, aren't they? All based around data, all based around your time. Um, you know, how fast did you do it? How much weight did you lift in a powerlifting competition or whatever? Whereas this is one of the only fitness events, really, that's that's not about that. It's more about just completing it. And it's that taking part that counts, but it really kind of is that, isn't it, in, in obstacle course racing? Certainly in Tough Mudder, I think. But others... Others tend to be more of a race where there's like cha- world championships and there's you know, money on the line, mm. like Spartan and stuff. But with Tough Mudder, it's more of just a, a group event. So let's reminisce and talk about our experience with Tough Mudder. Yeah, so we did two ages ago. Didn't I'm we? pretty sure we did it in 2015 and 2016. Yeah, two on the bounce. We definitely did it in 2015 because I got the t shirt that says 2015 on it. Mm. I'm pretty sure we did it. The year afterwards, or potentially two years afterwards. I think it was the year. Anyway, I digress. We it, did too. It was fucking <laughs> ages ago, basically. Yeah. And I've actually got some pictures on my laptop of us doing it. I meant to print them off to show you, but you can f- you'll flash them up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't. Um, I didn't know you had pictures of it. Which, are they like professional ones? Yeah, they're ones that are mate. So we did this with a friend, Key Brown. Shout out, Key. Shout out, lit friend of the pod. Yeah. Uh, it's the I think it was from the first year when he filmed it on his GoPro. Ah, yeah, he did. And he, oh, he's got that video actually. He has got a he's video, got a video somewhere. Video so we'll have potentially, to dig that out. potentially, if this video still exists, we could clip <laughs> some footage in. Yeah, or we could dig it out and put it like as a video unlisted at the bottom. Yeah, we'll put it on the socials or something. Yeah. But basically, anyway, <laughs> basically, you don't need to see the photos. Just take my word for it. We looked fucking a young as fuck. Yeah, and just. 
so massively unprepared. We pretty much look unrecognisable from yes, <laughs> from like especially you. <laughs> yeah, this is true. You've changed a lot. Um, this is pre pre Royal Marines as well. This is like. I was a completely different person. This is pre yeah. basically everything yeah, it's true. that we've achieved in our lives. Yeah. This is like pre you joining the corps, pre uni, what, pre what, uni, what pre a pre a level, first year of college it is. Oh uh, yeah. That's so you even mean. you hadn't even finished your public service course at yeah, college. That's mental. Um, and it, well, I mean, we we got through it, but I guess were you were you into running at that point? No. You so were, I was just we a bro- dragged I was, you round. I was just a bro lifter. Yeah. And I remember it that. fucking wrote me off. Because I, I was training for the Marines, so I was like in good cardio shape, so I was dragging you around, I remember that. In, in fairness, I think I had just started running, but to the extent where I was doing like 5Ks. Yeah, but this links back to what I was saying about it not being deterring for someone who maybe isn't a, a you know, accomplished runner, because they've got to look at maybe half a mile of un, unbroken running, rather than 10K or 5K. Yeah, mentally, it's a lot easier to break up. Yeah, in your in your mind, because like you said, you're never actually moving for more than half a mile no. before you get a rest. Effectively, you you've got to queue up for the obstacles most yeah, of the time. Yeah, exactly. So. And I think I'm right in saying that I'm pretty sure the first year we did it, it took us about four hours. Did it? I think so. But then yeah. the, the year, the second year when we went back, we did it in half the time. Oh yeah, well, you were you were because I'd started running. More we were just then. fitter. And just older and more and just mature, older, more mature. Like we were quite young when we did it for the first time. I seem to remember, um, you you were, I think the first year, I think it was between you and Key, you were like ducking out of obstacles. So the yeah, first year, yeah. you were ducking out of some obstacles, and yeah. then the second year, you had your you had your comeuppance, and you were like, right, fuck it, I'm gonna get my money's worth here. And then you did all of them, and then Key, who was the opposite to you last time. He then started to dodge all his obstacles. I'd oh, completely forgotten about this aspect <laughs> of the run, right? but we will talk about it more in depth now because it, it paints me in a good light. Yeah. So basically, unfortunately for Key, sorry Key, this may not come across particularly well for you. But, uh, you're not here to defend yourself. So. Clipped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the first year I was a bit of a wet wipe, so to speak. Yeah. And I think I... I bottled at least like four of the obstacles. Yeah, I seem to remember three, but I don't know, maybe maybe one. So I didn't it's like twenty of them. I didn't do the crybaby one, which is right. like that's the tear gas, isn't it? Supposedly like tear gas, but it's like it's, it's like vapor gas. rub, isn't it? Yeah, it's just uncomfortable. Um, yeah, it's like a knee high um, vat of like you know sealed off area that's about what about eighty meters, fifty meters probably, and you have to probably. basically crawl hands and knees through this gas essentially it was not gas yeah oh, they couldn't gas people so I bottled that one I think I bottled one that involved swimming or deep water and it's, no. one where, it's one where you crawl up the inverted pipe and then drop out the end of it into like oh, a pool oh yeah 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 yeah. and it, like, there's like a water warning and I fucking hate water by yeah, the way. I'm, yeah, like, yeah. I'm a very much a land mammal I think by the way your <laughs> your rationale for missing these obstacles see <laughs> I seem to remember was that Fucking, I've paid for this. I'll do what I want and I'll yeah, do it at my yeah. leisure. <laughs> I have my that. capitalist hat on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm getting what I want be, from be, this. Bear with though because my redemption arc is incoming, mm. so. I bounce back. Uh, so I can't remember which other ones I avoided, oh, I but I think, I think I did about four anyway. And then you, the rest of you. So we did, it was me, you, Key Brown. His brother and his dad, wasn't it? Or is it? His, yeah, his brother. Yeah. Stu, shout out Stu. His dad. Ad Brown. Yeah. And Harry Flanders. Oh, Harry did it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the, so all so of you was basically... A big, a big crew. So there was a big crew of us. We all went down. Basically, I was the one that bottled the most. <laughs> I think maybe, like, Key didn't do one or something. Yeah. But anyway, following year... Yeah, fast forward. I'm not a wet wipe anymore. Okay. I had a bit between my teeth. Yeah, he did. And I went there with the mentality, oh, I want to do them all this, this time. Yeah. Conversely, Key Brown had my old mentality hat on. He'd been... He, he was like, well, I did them all last year. Now I'll just do the ones I want yeah, to do. Yeah. So then this, he ended up... <laughs> this was like... This was his testimonial. Yeah, yeah. He was just like, I'm here to enjoy myself. And that was... And then he ended up doing, missing like six or seven of them. He, like, he really didn't do, do many of them last time. Yeah, he, time. he basically just ran a half marathon in the field. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Cross country half marathon. Basically, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I can't remember which ones he didn't do. The, there was one where... So he, he, so he didn't do Arctic Enema. 
second year. Do you not? I don't think so. Which is the cold water one? That right. is like the infamous one. That's the one that you referred to earlier, where yeah. you kind of like you slide into what is effectively like a shipping container full of ice, full of ice, and midway across, you have to fully submerge yourself to get under an obstacle. Yeah, and then you come out the other end. It's about it's quite a way. It's probably about ten foot, isn't it? You have to swim. I I can't. Like it was fit. Like I literally had to grab onto the side. Yeah, like, yeah I, I still did it though. Yeah, you did do that one. Um, Key, uh, he didn't do the electric one. So there's a at the end. There's like an electric. You will have seen it. People sprinting through these electric things. But halfway through last the, the last time I did it, there was a crawl in one of them. So we did a yet to crawl. And again, there was these things that dangle down, and like every third one of them electrocuted you. And he was like, "Fuck that! I ain't doing that." Yes. So uh, that. The, the the one at the end is called electro shock therapy I think yeah I know the one that you mean that's like midway around is it like when you're in a very shallow pool of water yeah and you kind of literally have to like crawl on your, on your front yeah which I always thought was a bit dodgy because you shouldn't be combining water and electric well they market this this shock as 10,000 volts which can't mm. which can't be no they will over over harm everything won't yeah they? that's what like 10,000 volts would kill you yeah, yeah. Like a mains plug is two hundred and forty, isn't it? And that kills people. So. That no, that that literally kills people. Yeah, I know. So like <laughs> that's bollocks. It's just basically like wired up to a car battery, I think, isn't it? Like, oh yeah, it's just a little shock. It's not nice, but yeah. it doesn't it doesn't hurt. But anyway, yeah. like those ones are actually the easiest obstacles because they don't require any specific skill other than just getting it your me. own your own mentality basically. Yeah, yeah. there was a there's a couple of interesting ones actually. I quite I quite enjoyed it. Um we have to do another one. Have you done another one since? Yeah, so a couple of years ago, post COVID, I think in like summer twenty twenty one, I did one with our mate Al Craig. Oh uh, yeah. And doing it older mm. and wiser oh, was no. so much better. Was it? Yeah, yeah, so he did it on three hours sleep hung over. <laughs> and we still <laughs> breezed classic. it. Yeah, of course he did. Uh but yeah, it was class. Yeah, well, because I just think be, like, being more physically mature, it just makes it like a lot more enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. Um so that's Tough Mudder, and that's the only one, the only obstacle race we've done. Um, so I'm, I'm, I just need to, a bit of, bit of background. A bit of, yeah, a bit of business background. Okay, Basically, okay. Tough Mudder got bought out by Spartan, mm. which is what we will discuss mm. in a bit. Uh, but it, it still exists, but I think it went into involuntary bankruptcy. Yeah. Okay. So, they're, they're, well, it still has the name. So it's tough yeah, I think they've kept the name on, obviously, because of the brand recognition. Yeah. But technically now, Spartan Race and Tough Mudder are effectively like one and the same thing. Yeah. Even though they're two separate races. I remember Spartan coming round later on. I remember that was that's not that old. Yeah. Like, and I think Tough Mudder, Tough Mudder originally may have been a US company, whereas I think Spartan may be British. Yeah, potentially, yeah. Um, but does Spartan have loads of a little bit more variance in terms of what they offer don't they so Tough Mudder is basically just like one or two there's two distances so there's a mini mudder and then yeah. there's the full mudder yeah the full mudder is 12 miles the mini mudder is I want to say like half that I think it is like like five, it might, it might just be like 5k oh maybe yeah so there's that and then the Spartan has I think like a three mile sprint one, a 10k, they have an ultra, they have like a, a 13 mile one. So they have a lot of options for you to go down. I think that's probably a wise decision from there and business wise because you can look at it and be like, okay, I don't really want to do the fucking full one. Let's do like the three mile one. Yeah, they're not really giving people any excuse not to do it, are they? No. Because they suit for everyone there. They're throwing a lot of shit at the wall. Yeah, exactly, which is always good. Um, but you can chat about the ultra well we'll leave we'll come on to that okay so we have got some exciting obstacle course race plans in the pipeline but we'll leave that for the big reveal at the end uh just going back to tough mudder for a second i thought we should talk over some of the notable obstacles yes just so people know what they're getting into if they do want to sign up for one yeah uh so we've talked about arctic enema Mm. i think haven't we yeah yeah that's the shipping container full of ice that's yeah. Now, really popular, actually. People are probably sound. It's that. basically the mother of all ice bats. I'd act- actively enjoy doing that now. Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> I'd pay for that. Especially um, like mid-race when you're hanging out yeah. as well. Like It's perfect. So yeah. refreshing. I really didn't mind that one. That was that was fine. Uh, Cry Baby, again. The gas. You've spoken about that. It's like one. the... Yeah, it's like you pump... They pump a, like a polytunnel full of... like What I can only describe as like vapor rub. 
Yeah, and you're essentially crawling. You just it. crawl through it. Like, as long, if you, long as you don't mind, kind of like menthol, it's fine. You're just a little bit uncomfortable for about 30 seconds. Uh, mud mile. Oh, yeah. Pretty self explanatory. Yeah. Now, depending on which, what time of the year you do this and in what location, this can be fucking rank. Yeah, true. Because it so, can require just so much more effort. Because I, I remember the first year we did it was pretty wet, but then the second year we did it was pretty dry. Mm. The first year it was fucking horrendous. It took us so long to get through that mile. Yeah. So energy sapping. Your trainers are fucked. In fact, my trainer came off at one point. I remember that. My, your socks are fucking no use whatsoever. Written off. Because they're so sodden, mine actually ripped. It's a bit like the mud running training, really. Because the, re- yeah. the reason they do the mud running training is because it's so, so energy sapping. Every step you have to lift, not only your now wet and sodden boots, but about three kilos worth of mud as well. So... You, Everything like your hip flexors and your quads just get so tired. Yeah, this is like the severe equivalent of the mud yeah, run, basically. Yeah, yeah, it? basically. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a good laugh, but it's actually probably, I would say, but physically the most demanding obstacle. Yeah, well, because it's a, it's a long Cause, one. Yeah, because it, well, it's a mile. Yeah. Or the, best the, rest, the rest of them are basically 50 metres max. Yeah, yeah. Really. And as I said, like depending on what time of year you do it, that could be honking. Mm. Yeah, so do it in the winter. Get the, get your money worth. <laughs> in the winter. Uh, electroshock therapy we've talked about. Yeah. So there's the one at the end that you basically just walk through, like well, you run through like a twenty foot long corridor of dangling wires. Mm. Uh, it's like that jackass sketch if any of you seen it, but yeah. they do it with tasers. Imagine that, but just with like wires yeah, dangling like, down that dangling just kind down. of shock you. It's not every wire isn't electrified either. No, you'll touch like three, and then the fourth one will fuck you up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's that one and then there's like an iteration of that earlier on which is kind of like very shallow pool of water and you're on all fours aren't you mm. kind of crawling yeah uh, and it's just the same thing really isn't yeah, it you're exactly just trying to, trying to avoid the wires uh, what else oh Everest oh yeah Everest is that's that's the one that, so if you've ever seen Ninja Warrior it, this is this super is, popular the, it's um, that massive ramp you sprint up it, don't you, and then grab the top of it. Is that the one? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think this is probably like the toughest obstacle in terms of the fact that it requires physical capability and teamwork. Yeah, true. So it's a quarter, it's a quarter pipe that you basically it's like a greased up quarter pipe that you have to run up, but then you're also reliant on someone to catch your hand at the top. Yeah, really. Because you can't. It's like designed in a way that it's a little bit too far to get up yourself. Yeah. And so if no one's there for you to grab, you can't really do it. Some people can do it themselves. Yeah. But like the majority of people would be reliant on someone to pull them off. Yeah. And that's probably the most common one for someone to walk around and you say mm. like... In fact, I think that was one of the ones I skipped the first year. Yeah, probably. Uh, actually, I've got a funny story about that. When I did it with Al a few years ago, we made it to Everest and there was a massive queue for whatever reason because like you kind of have to go individually. So... They does, you know, you do get a bit of a backlog. Yeah. So we were waiting in the queue, and this woman, fucking stacked it, <laughs> like back. Like she was a bit overweight, but yeah. she went. She gave it some umph. Yeah. And because it's greased up, instead of like getting to a certain point on the quarter pipe and then like making the leap, making a leap upwards, mm. she made the leap kind of horizontally, <laughs> just into the side of the quarter pipe, oh, and fuck she fucking. Yeah. Just slid right back down. I can imagine that. Like the whole thing was shut off like five minutes. Really? Proper like medical intervention and everything. Fuck, she was like yeah, KO'd. She was fucked, yeah. Which isn't really what you want before you're gonna attempt it yourself. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like, did you nail it though? Yeah, it was sound, but like some people like, that genuinely put some people off. Yeah, and people walking around it. Uh, yeah, that'll be common. So there's other common ones as well that like are just like generic, like classic obstacle course obstacles, like like the eight foot walls, yeah, they're always a good one. Yeah, and just, again, one you can't really get over yourself. You have to have someone to leg you up. Again, they're about teamwork as well. Depending on the time of the year that you do it and the weather conditions, can be fucking stinking. Yeah, they can be really difficult because you can't get a good run up and a good purchase on the wall. And yeah, that kind of thing. But similar to that as well, those angled walls. Yeah, you know yeah, the ones. Yeah, that, so yeah. like, they're, they're, not, they're actually difficult. They're right? harder, I yeah. think, because yeah. you've not got that's all upper body strength. Yeah. You're basically doing a muscle up, aren't you? Pretty much, yeah. You were a kind of supported muscle up, aren't you? Um, but they take a while as well. They, t- they take quite a long yeah, time. So yeah, again, yeah. you get that backlog of people. Uh, what else is there? Monkey bars. Oh, on fun- steroids. Funky monkey. Mm. So the picture that I've got of us from 2015, we'd just done... The monkey bars. The monkey bars. Yeah. 
Oh, I fucking love that obstacle. That That's class. my favourite. Yeah, Last time I did it, I nailed that. <laughs> and the bloke, he was uh, like one of the stewards, was like gobsmacked. Yeah, I know. Because like, basically all of my training is just oriented around like smashing this obstacle. <laughs> Not deliberately, but like just a, a lot of what I do yeah, grip lend, strength lends stuff. itself to that. Yeah, okay fucking gorilla so I knocked it out of the park like because you obviously like it's not just straight monkey bars it's like you kind of go sh- up don't you yeah it's like spinning wheels and then yeah. there's one that goes side to side and shit so I fucking like just batted it like straight out and he was like whoa I reckon about 3% of people complete that that's mental that isn't it it's like um, from a movie like, yeah I, like, I know yeah, don't worry about it yeah <laughs> he said the same I think when I I did it the first time it wasn't quite as mental as that one it was like it just up and then then down again, then up again, maybe. Yeah, yeah like it ascended lot, and descended, yeah. didn't it? I remember. It was like but was there not like a leap of faith at the end? Was there, like there was a swing, like a longer one. There was just one. a swing involved or something, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah, and he was like, fucking hell, you're the only person to do that all day. I was yes. like, yes. Love that. Because um, that was when I was at the height of my Marines training, so I was fucking calisthenics ninja. Yeah, true. <laughs> that is one of the best obstacles, actually. Oh, yeah. like, if you're into like calisthenics and uh, like pull-ups and shit, that's probably the that's, that's your time to shine. Yeah, exactly. Put all that training to good use. Uh, what else is there? Oh, there's like a cargo net one. That's a bit dead. There was like a cliff jump thing, wasn't there? Where you had to jump into a pool of water, like from a decent height. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you isn't it one way you're supposed to like jump out and grab onto a rope? Oh, yeah, but most, swing. But most people miss the rope and just fucking plant it in the water. Yeah, like basically, yeah. Yeah, it's good fun, man. Uh, I think there's another one that I was... Oh, right, yeah, this isn't. this wasn't an obstacle when we did it. This was, okay. This was a new one that there's... Right, that thought they'd up. Thought up when I did it with Al. It's like a massive like rigging. Mm. It's a bit like that fucking. What's that obstacle on the Tarzan? That they stop oh, the, people doing now. That you the, like punch uh, through. A punch through the net. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. But instead of punching through it, you just climb up one side and climb down. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, okay. It's just like that on steroids. Yeah, it's like a massive cargo fuck net, off I like think. cargo net Eiffel Tower. Right, basically. Got, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, that's decent. The um, it's a good little thing because I guess. Most people, um, depending on what you've kind of done in the past, will probably find a point in that course where they've got to face one of their fears, potentially, like, ha- hang it, even hanging your own body weight for, for a lot of people is, is, like, a daunting thing. Yeah. Jumping off something definitely is, like, cold water, potentially, electric shocks. These are all things that people probably put in their head and think, fucking hell, don't want to do that. So it's good and exercising, kind of getting past something that's potentially... A, a little bit of a fear of yours. I think you, yeah, I think you're onto it there because you're right. I think that's why I bottled so many obstacles the first time round. Yeah, because they were all ones that like involved water. Mm. Yeah, that, like that's, water, that's a common it. theme. There yeah. you go. And and so it's kind of about facing up to a little bit of a. Yeah, and it's not intense. Like, fear. and this no. is the other reason why it's so inclusive and that I like it because if you don't fancy it. No one's gonna fucking beefy for it. No, exactly. you just you, you just, just walk, walk around. you just walk around yeah. like it's not tense. Yeah, um, I don't know how that work on Spartan. To be fair, I'd imagine you do have to probably do them. Yes, because that's a more of a, like a competition race deal. So if you're not doing some of the obstacles, obviously you're gonna get a better time yeah. than someone else. So I think that's just tough mudder. But again, that's why I think tough mudder is quite good because it's inclusive. Right. Yeah. Well, should we talk about Spartan Ultra Race now? Yeah, I think that leads us quite nicely on to it. Yeah, uh, let's do it. So, I think seventh of October, mm. twenty twenty-three. Is it seventh? Yeah. Okay. In East Sussex, right? There is one of the few Spartan Ultra races in the UK, mm-hmm. and we've said that we're going to do it. We have haven't signed up yet. Uh, we probably should we, do that. We, we've said it on the internet now, though. So yeah, this is people true. are gonna hate us if we don't. Yeah, we need to do that. Then. Strangers that we've never met are gonna yeah, call us a hat. That's that's my life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I deal with on the day to day. Being a hat. Yeah, well, being called a hat. Um, yeah. So this is a fifty k. Right. It's a fifty kilometer. Fl- uh, <laughs> he's had a beer. It's stay. a fifty kilometer course uh, divided up between sixty obstacles. Yeah. So I I looked at that and thought, dream. Um, so it's based in obstacle every like eight hundred meters, which is gonna be you like it's gonna get fucking stinking after a bit. Of that it's gonna get stinking after a bit, but equally it's mentally again my kind of event because anything after eight hundred meters of running gets a bit tedious. Yeah, it? and exactly, and like we we've just done 
the training for the marathon, which was fucking laborious and really long. And for me, I might be completely wrong, and I might report back that I was absolutely ill-informed. But looking at a Spartan 50k, I think that's more easy to kind of bite off than a marathon is just running. Yeah. Even though it's further, I just feel like I can square it in my head easier. I might be wrong. I might come back thinking but, that's, that was a stupid thing to say. But equally, the time cap on these Spartan races is like 12 hours, isn't it? Yeah. Because you start at like 7am. Yeah, and people and I are think finishing at like... People that's finish why, at, Yeah. That's why you start so early because the idea is that you're not going to knock it out in three hours. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, is, it is going to take a long time. But again, I don't mind that. No, people do race it. And again, I think they there are different, slightly different obstacles than tough mudder because it's more fun tough mudder I think the more like rope climbs and kind of yeah. like sandbag carries and shit like that you have to do this is probably more what you would call like a conventional obstacle course yeah I mean there are going to be like fun ones thrown in not fun ones but you know like a bit different that kind of style yeah but equally like there are going to be like sandbag carries mm. and like log carries but again we live for that shit we do live for that so this is the other thing that we found when we did tough mudder a lot of people enjoy the running mm. and then the fear sets in when they get to an obstacle. I'm the opposite. Yeah, so I'm excited because I can stop running now. <laughs> yeah, I can stop running and actually play to my strength. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's true. I actually think um, doing those kind of things aided me when it came to bottom field in the Marines. Um, not obviously like directly, like the reason I passed bottom field was because I did the tough mudder, but I'm thinking like some of the obstacles, like for example, um, the monkey bars when you piss wet through mm. is a challenge yeah. that I was fucking sound with every single time the six foot wall same like the um, the little balance beam things yes they're higher in the marines but it's still the same kind of idea um, so a lot of it is fairly similar because it's obstacles it's the same shit um, so I think carrying some of your technique over having like practiced it in a controlled environment where it's no pressure is probably a really good good idea. Yeah, um, I think I do think we're quite suited to obstacle courses as well. Yeah, so we've got sh- strong upper body build. Yeah, quite small. N- yeah, nimble, nimble. <laughs> agile. So I remember that one obstacle actually. This comes back to me now. The first year we did it was horrible actually. It's really claustrophobic. It's like you're crawling through like what I want to describe as like a really long box, mm. but the top of the box is actually like plastic sheeting and it's weighed down with water. Uh, so you remember, remember that. that. So you're like constantly fighting to keep yourself upright in the press-up position mm. whilst also kind of shuffling through. I remember that, yeah, because people were getting in front of me and they were pissing me off. I remember, um, I remember it distinctly because London Callum was playing on the speaker system. Yes, <laughs> Do you I remember? remember? I remember turning to you, but your fucking favourite song. Um, yeah, that's that was a good one. That was fucking hard, to be fair. There was that was one, one of the hard ones, actually. Another one that keeps popping into my head. There was like a a grate um, and kind of three quarters full of water yes. and you'd be on your back and you had to like scrape yourself along the grate facing upwards and so, you, you almost feel like you're getting waterboarded because your face goes in the oven yeah it's like involuntary, involuntary waterboarding that's yeah. horrible I think I fucked that off the first year did you? you did it the second yeah. year did it the second year yeah. then the last time I did it was for class yeah, because again, it's just upper body strength yeah, and you've got the added dragging, dragging you've got the added buoyancy of being in the water as well yeah so as long, yourself along. as long as you can get past the fact that you're like nearly drowning, yeah, it's piss. Exactly. Uh, the other thing, coming back to Spartan for a second, that I think um, he's going to be quite interesting about it because, like we said about Tough Mudder, with it being so many obstacles, you don't know. You might know a few of them, might have seen a few of them, but you don't know the majority. And certainly for this Spartan, there's sixty obstacles. I'm guessing sixty of them are going to be fucking different. They're all going to be different, aren't they? Yeah, so, they're not going to repeat obstacles. Surely, yeah, surely not. So like. I've seen maybe five, six Spartan mm. obstacles, so that's ten percent. I'm excited now to see the rest of them, which is going to be going yeah. to be cool. Um, so we're doing that. We set this. We we set our goals, didn't we, at the start of the year? Yeah, um, and we've seen we've seen it through with the marathon. Seen so one off. Yeah, one that's probably it's got, that's got to be the hardest. Surely, yeah, especially London because you yeah. don't get place. Um, and then we had high rocks pairs and Spartan ultra. So. We've got two to, two to go, basically. Happy days. Yeah. Uh, They're our joint goals, anyway. There is a slight elephant in the room in relation to this obstacle course race because we haven't spoken about the wolf run. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. I've got a slight issue with the wolf run, not right. least because it's called the wolf run. 
Yeah, that's true. I think this is more targeted at Norsey Runners. It is more of a running event, I and think. You know what I feel <laughs> towards Norsey Runners. Yeah, I think it is more targeted towards runners. Is it just essentially a mud run? Is it, right. I don't think there is many obstacles, is there? So there's, there's two formats. There's a 10k yeah, mm. and a 5k. Yeah. So already, you've lost more respect because the distance is shorter. Yeah. And like you said, I think the emphasis is more on running. I think it's more on like big pits of mud. So it's like it's like a cross country run, I think. Yeah. Interspersed yeah, yeah. with like wading through a pond at one point, yeah. and then like you said, there might be like a patch of mud that you have to it's kind crawl of like through crawl through. I have an issue with that because it's very low cost to put on. So this is literally the criticism I've written. Right. Like so the obstacles aren't as good. It's it's literally. You're just making use of nature. Yeah. It's already there. Yeah. I could do that in the fields behind our house. shit weather. We can go and fucking do that. Yeah. <laughs> the farmers literally just ploughed the field. We can go and do that now. Should we do it? Yeah. So that's that, That's the wolf run fucking ticked off, mate. You don't that's have to do, go that, to that's, an event. That's all the airtime you're getting from us. <laughs> you fucking cunt. <laughs> fucking cunt. I'm sure it's a good event. But, um, but if you're going to do one, I'd recommend you do Tough Mudder because... It's uh, there's much more buy-in from the organisers. There is. Uh, Ashley, do you want another bit? Oh, really? Yeah, go for it. Quick, 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 quick interlude. interlude. Smashing through them. Quick interlude. Jesus, lad. Full disclosure as well. During our marathon prep, we really didn't drink that much, did we? No. And I'm a bit of a piss can, so it was quite hard for me. Yeah. But... I'm not, so it was sound. I've, I've done, done my days of pissing it up. Well, why end them? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So. But no, I'm not a piss cap, but I do like a drink. Mm. That's what they all say. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic, but <laughs> so I thought we'd end. Actually, we could end with a bit of a drinking game. I thought let's go. We do some. Well, well, we'll we'll come on to that, and then we've obviously got reasons to be cheerful. But I had a bit of th- had a bit of a fun this morning, mm-hmm. and I thought I'd come up with my own obstacle course race concept. Okay, go for it. I've played into your. Interests. Okay. It's Harry, like po- it. Harry Potter related. Oh yeah, love that. Yeah. Right. Brilliant. So this is. I'm me. already. I'm already. Keen. This is me really bored on a bank holiday. Right. <laughs> this, is, this is the extent of where my mind goes. So it's called the mud. The mud blood run. The mud blood run. <laughs> I love, that. love that. It's seven miles. You know why it's seven miles? Seven Horcruxes. Well, yeah, because J.K. Rowling repeatedly states that seven is the most magical number. Yeah. There you go. So you've got seven Weasley children. Yeah. Uh, seven Horcruxes. Okay. Dumbledore's office is on the seventh floor of Hogwarts. <laughs> it's such a no. Seven secret. Doesn't even like Harry <laughs> Seven secret passages from Hogwarts to Hogsmeade. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I thought it's true. <laughs> Warner <laughs> Brothers, if you're listening, fucking come at me. <laughs> right, so I was racking my brain for obstacles and names that we could call these obstacles that are obviously Harry Potter related. Mm. Started out well, it went downhill. Yeah. But. I can, imagine. I can weigh in here though. Yeah, exactly. Good. So, first one, so there's obviously seven obstacles yeah. for seven miles. First one, Harry Squatter. Harry Squatter. Oh uh, some kind of like squat obstacle, yeah. maybe sandbag related. Maybe like um, duck walks. Yeah. Like duck walking through a. Exactly. I'm, I'll, I'll be honest, I've put a lot of investment in the name here. Yeah. Not, yeah, not a lot of thought into the obstacle. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here. This would be an event next year. We'll uh, make it happen. Yeah, so, yeah, catch me at Warner Brothers Studio. Who's <laughs> fucking putting this on? For a bunch of nosy Chinese tourists. Yeah, uh, yeah, and me. Number six, Dive Gone Alley. <laughs> dive Gone Basically just a water slide on a hill. Nice, like it. Could incorporate some element of mud. Maybe there's a big festering turd at the bottom of it waiting for you. Yeah, there's got to be some mud. It's mud blood run. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number five, the Log Warts Express. <laughs> You're carrying logs. It's right? a log carry, yeah. You've got yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, see, the name does its job. Is it exactly? I know exactly what it Thank was, Thank you. Lad. So, it's... smashed it. Fucking some hats at Warner Brothers quaking in their boots. So. Yeah, they're fucking worried. Get me on your marketing team, boys. <laughs> uh, Dumble saw. Dumble saw. Yeah. Is that I'll be honest. Saw? This is just. <laughs> yeah, it could be. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning like a big long plank of wood, and you walk up one side, and then it flips and it goes down the other side. Probably it's not getting, great for risk assessment. Get rubbed off by Richard Harris. <laughs> Maybe, right, okay, so this is what I wrote. An eight-foot wooden wall obstacle that you have to climb over. Oh, okay. You know, in the sense that, because those, those wooden walls are sore, because mm. you obviously inevitably not knock your calf, oh, or okay. you shin, you shin yeah. it, don't you? Yeah. So I was thinking that. 
Number three, stupefy. <laughs> that's just electric shock therapy. That's just nice. that's just straight up plagiarism. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. Yeah, that. that's that's good. That's uh, a good one. This is where it went downhill. Okay. Right. Number two, Hagrid's bush. <laughs> <laughs> fuck's sake right what's this is, that then this is like a cargo net crawl with like vegetation thrown in vegetation thrown in yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know throw some throw some plants in there or something okay sweet yeah yeah cool yeah. that sounds great and this is really scraping the barrel yeah. number one this could be like this could be the end goal right the goblin's prostate fucking hell goblin's prostate that sounds so graphic yeah uh, and I haven't got an obstacle yet but I just sounded the name I was yeah. thinking something dark wet Maybe that maybe a tunnel. Ma- yeah, maybe that tunnel crawl. There you go. Yeah, because that's a bit like a prostate, isn't it? Yeah, like a really, really tight, really <laughs> like a really tight <laughs> ring. <laughs> <laughs> really claustrophobic tunnel. Yeah, oh, I like it. Buzzing so that's, that's, not, that's pretty good to say that I spent an hour on it this morning. Yeah, it's not bad at all. That you've got a you got a veritable obstacle race on your hands. Yeah, Tough Mudder went involuntary bankrupt. Yeah, in we could come in. in a space of ten years. There's a, definitely a Harry Potter shaped void to fill in the obstacle course race market. Yeah, imagine all the all the artwork and shit you could fucking plow into. Exactly. That imagine the artwork that you could pay a professional graphic designer to do for the Goblin's prostate. Yeah, they'd love that. They would love that, yeah, because a lot of graphic designers are perverted, if you didn't know that. (laughs) Uh, Right, so that's all my obstacle course related material. Is there anything else you want to wade in with? Um, No, I think so. Yeah, I I mean, just the takeaway point here, do tough mudder, basically. Because, as we've said, as a kind of fitness event, really, not really a fitness event, as like an inclusive event, it is one of the better ones, isn't it, to go and do, I think. Yeah, I can't really knock it. In fact, I didn't actually have any criticism towards it until you said that it's just a bit expensive. It's a little bit, but again, caveat that with it, it is kind of worth it. Like they are putting on a decent event. Like it's not like you get shortchanged. Yeah, if you if you actually think about what you're getting for your money, like where else can you attempt obstacles like that, really? Yeah, exactly. And if you're looking to kind of, I guess, challenge yourself in a little little bit of a, if you're like new to fitness, this is kind of a good thing to work towards. I feel like because. It requires all the elements of fitness that you're going to be building towards in, in like an initial phase anyway. So like cardiovascular fitness a, a little bit, like you're going to need to run a bit, upper body strength to get yourself up and over shit, the ability to hang your own body weight to be able yeah. to do fucking monkey bars. So if, you, if you're looking to early on in your fitness journey to like set a goal to do, then looking at a tough mudder, I don't think there's much better much better place to, to go because... You've got to then look look at all the obstacles or as best you can and be like, okay, I need to be able to do this, 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 and this, and that. I think creates for you a quite well-rounded result. Yeah, like you said, it just touches on kind of all aspects of fitness, doesn't mm. it? And you also have to come over some mental barriers as well. Yeah, to do the obstacles. I so, think uh, in a good in a good way as well. You don't have to be like unbelievable at any certain aspects of fitness. No, and like we were saying earlier, it's a good one to sign up for if you're a beginner in in the gym or whatever because if for whatever reason you get to an obstacle and you can't do it you just miss it out yeah exactly it's not that tense you know what I mean it's not like you sign up for a 10k but if you don't complete it you don't get your medal yeah that's why I think for beginners who haven't done a fitness event before it's perfect like it was our first event wasn't it yeah exactly look look at us now it quite literally was and also I should say they do sort you out with some goodies at the end yeah exactly so if you're of age you get a pint Mm. or a bottle of beer yeah, it's about the side, all right. Yeah, you get a shitload of like protein bars and uh, energy bars, don't you? Yeah, it's not that they're not. Yeah, cheap. they don't skimp. You get a t-shirt. Mm. They don't do medals. They do like headbands with like the year of the year that you completed it and the color. The color corresponds to how many you've done. Yeah, so you can see people in the warm area with like black ones or whatever, and they you know they've done ten tough mudders and they're yeah. That's in fact to be fair, that's that's probably my only tough mudder ick. Yeah, people that wear their previous headbands on the next on race. the next one just, to, yeah. just as, as a status symbol. Yeah, yeah. Cause yeah. At, the end, at the end, at the end, I know why they do it because they're paranoid that at the end when they say, "Oh, well, I've done eight. Like the they bloke, won't believe them. They won't believe them. It's not that deep. Yeah. It's a fucking headband. Yeah, exactly. It holds no actual value in the real world. Yeah, essentially, what you've done is paid twelve hundred pounds for that headband. <laughs> yeah, <isn't> you? <laughs> you paid twelve hundred quid. They're just gonna give you one, mate. Yeah, you know, you don't need a driving license to prove who you are. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, that's the only the only drawback. Nauseous. 
Uh, as, a, as always. <laughs> yeah, there's always a nose, and we've we've covered that one off. Yeah, we've winkle picked it out. <laughs> we've winkle. Shout out to Mr. Winkle Picker if he's listening. <laughs> you know who you are. Uh, right, so do you want to do reason to be cheerful, or do you want to do a drinking game first? Let's do a little drinking game first, if right. you've got one in mind. Like. For the visually impaired, I'm now going to step out of the camera shot <laughs> to go and find some trivia. Some uh, trivia? Do football trivia. Yeah, let's do football. Sport. It's on brand for our helmet of the week, so here we go. Happy days, right? Right. Talk Please. the listeners through what we're doing. Uh, I don't know yet. Okay. I think they're just trivia cards, and they're football related. Happy days. We'll all find out. Right. Okay. Here we go. So these are just like football trivia cards. I'm terrible at these. And we'll just do a few each, and I'll shuffle them up. Okay. And if you get it wrong, you drink, I guess. Yeah, we'll just have to see. <laughs> I mean, it's quite early on, so we won't get onto the shots just yet. Yeah, this is. But uh, you just take a few. Just and we just go we just go back and forth a few times. There's my watches upside down, which is a good start. <laughs> <laughs> it's all style over substance. You can't even tell the time. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, right, who's going first? Do you want to go first? You yeah, go. I'll give you one first. Yeah. Right. Uh, which is the oldest team in the English Football League? Wembley. No. The oldest team? Yeah, they used to be a team. Right, it's not Wembley. Right, okay. It's Notts County. Well, they, they, did, they did use to It's Notts County. Okay. They recently went non-league though. So this this could actually be out of date. No, I've outsmarted out the trivia card because <laughs> I'm a nose. Okay. Who broke his neck in the 1956 FA Cup final? Right, given that I'm 24, I'm going to say I don't know. Bert Trautman right. of Manchester yeah. City. So not for naught. So <laughs> Doing so, well. So you got that wrong, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing well here. Right, your go or my go. Right. Which player has scored a hat-trick in all of the top four English divisions, the League Cup, the FA Cup, and for their own country? Okay. This is niche, I'm not going to lie, and he's not English. Oh, shit. Do you want right. a clue? Yeah. He's Welsh, and it's not Gareth Bale. <laughs> I've, not I have no idea. Go on. Robert Earnshaw. Fuck it, I wouldn't know. I, I literally... He used to play for the baggies, though. My fucking... My brain went to Alan Shearer. <laughs> yeah, same. Or any, like... Any, like, scoring accolade questions, you automatically, as an Englishman, go to Shearer... Michael Owen. Owen or Lineker. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and, yeah. and potentially Rooney or Harry Kane now. Okay. Next one. England coaches Sammy Lee and Ray Clements played together at which club? Liverpool. Oh, nice. Yes! Can have that the one. Liverpool fan gets the Liverpool <laughs> question right. I'd be a fraud if I didn't get that That's right. That's true. Right, okay. Do how many are one each now? You've got one, one nil. Have we done three each? Two each. Two each. Fucking is pissed. I'm pissed. I'm fucking <laughs> raucous. Which is the only English league football ground to have a pub on every corner? This is also yeah. out of date now. Right. So What, the stadium doesn't exist anymore? Yes. They're a Prem team with a relatively new stadium. Everton. That's not been built yet. Right. <laughs> Fuck no. <I> don't know. <laughs> Brentford. Brentford. It was Griffin Park, but they're in the new techie stadium now, aren't they? Mm. Whatever it's called. The uh, Brent can pull on every corner. That's why did they knock that down? That's a fucking great idea. That is. Do you have one more? Yeah. Okay. Who is the only English player to have won silverware at both Manchester United and Liverpool? Oh, is it Owen? Yeah, fucking. Yes. I was like, well, are you going to get that because we mentioned yeah, him before? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't um, have got it otherwise. Right, happy days. You there you go. All right, Sam. Bit of trivia for you there. Yeah. Congratulations if you got all them rides at home. Well, I, would, I didn't. What I would suggest is get out more. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make of that what you will. Stop, right, stop watching Tom Garrett TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out Tom Garrett. Right. Reasons to be cheerful. Yes. Do you want to go with yours I'll go first? with mine first. And it's, um, we've kind of covered it a little bit, I guess, but mm. it's the fact that we can now booze on the podcast. Yes. We so t- now beer has been introduced to the podcast. I think it adds an extra extra element for us. Well, as we know, through looking back on history, whenever beer has been introduced into everything, it's only made things better. Exactly. So, I mean, look at the United States, for example. Yes. That- how shit Prohibition was. <laughs> People still <laughs> so, drank anyway. Yeah, true. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, obviously... I mean, all our serious trainings out the fucking window now. It's summer. Ignore the weather. It's summer. Um, so we can now booze on the podcast. That's my reason this week. To be yeah, sure. so we're still doing high rocks doubles in kind of like 
It's getting... in like 24 weeks time, I think. It's, so it's, so it's in a while away. So it's ages away we can enjoy ourselves. But even then, I think the physical demands of training won't be as great. No, as good. marathon, it's because I mean, it's, it's a different type it's graphed, of training. But it's not like like two and a half hours at a time. This is what I mean. Like the, it's like the long runs with marathon training just kill you. Mm. You can't and be hungover for them. It's just hard on the on the joints and on the body. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good reason to be cheerful. I back yeah. that. As you as you will see now, I'm enjoying my second salt of the episode. <laughs> right, my reason to be cheerful is I don't know if you saw this in the news. It's a grandmother who's cycling a thousand miles in memory of her three children. No? Yeah. I did not see that. So she's 85. Fucking hell. She's Scottish. A thousand miles? Yeah, yeah. So she lost all of her kids within the space of about three years, a couple of years ago. She's like her adult kids, which mm. is shit. Uh, so she's cycling a thousand miles in her memory. What's the route? Where, where are we going? Where's she going? Uh, cycling around Scotland. I think she's already the oldest person to cycle from Land's End to John O'Groats. But that's mad. In a certain amount of time. 85 is mental as well. This, this always baffles me with older people like, smashing endurance events. Like, yeah. Now I've done what I would class as, well, an, like, like a little bit of an endurance event. The toll it takes on your body is absurd. And like, we're fit and active. Yeah. And like these people who are like 60 years our senior fucking just smashing it out like so the, this just reminded me I saw um, a 98 year old complete a 5k that's class this week like that is insane that is mad well, this one jumped out at me because my grandparents are like well the younger ones are 85 okay and like there is no way yeah yeah as much as I love them there's no way they would cycle a fucking thousand miles do you yeah. know what I mean that's me- there's no way I'd cycle a thousand miles no exactly well that's a big fucking reason though, isn't it? like it's a big why that. Mm. she's not doing it for no reason so that links in but um, I think this is also I think all of these people we've me- I mentioned last week someone who um, well the oldest participant in the marathon 90 years old I think this just exemplifies the fact that the, like these people have obviously been fit and active their entire life and have never let it slip even through like 70 80 85 90 they've always kept it going and that's just fucking mental. And that is, I think, something to be to look up to and, and try and try and copy if you uh, if you uh, if you actually can. Because being physically active for that for that long, not only is it going to preserve your cognitive ability yeah. as much as possible, but it just means you actually have quality of life for a lot longer. Yeah. So Mavis Patterson is a name. Shout out Mavis. Shout out well, that's class. That is awesome. I thought, like, there's no way I'd do that. Yeah. So the fact she's doing it at 85. And think about, like, cycling a thousand miles, especially around Scotland. Think about the incline you're going to have to negotiate. and like The, the fucking weather. The weather. Like, all these diff- different variables. She's not doing it on, like, a what bike. Also, the fact that she's made it to 85 in Scotland is pretty, <laughs> impre- pretty on impressive. That, on that diet of, like, zero fruit. Square sausage and <laughs> yeah. other forms of processed meat and iron brew. Uh, it's pretty good going that's pretty good she's had a good innings in of itself yeah she's obviously got that Scottish determination they're very hardy people just keep going uh, so that's my reasons to be cheerful just another little throwaway thing that I put together this morning yeah. I thought while we were boozing you had some time this morning eh? I have I've got too much, <laughs> I've got too much time on my hands yeah uh, I put together my top three low calorie bevs okay nice which I thought was topical given yeah. that it's our first boozing episode go for it uh, number one vodka lime soda Okay. I'll be honest, I don't <laughs> I don't drink this myself personally, but we know someone that does. Yeah. Uh, uh, so vodka lime and soda, so one measure of vodka, soda water, yeah. a bit of lime juice or fuck lime cordial. Fuck all in that. About ninety odd calories. For a for a glass. For a glass. Yeah. That's obviously a single, so yeah. if you double it it'd probably be like What is the calories coming from the, the vodka? Yeah. Okay. So soda water's got no calories in it. Because yeah. it's just carbonated water, yeah. effectively. Lime cordial, because it's such a small amount. Minimal. Negligible. So it's basically just the vodka. So yeah. that's pretty good. I mean, if you obviously had a double, it would be more. But nine, Still, 90 under calories. under 200 calories per decent. thing. You're not going to have like 20 of them, are you? Gin and, gin and tonic. Classic. Classic, that is, isn't it? Classic, again, like... Stick to the, the gin and slims, mate. Like less than nine... Slim line tonics, fucking... About 1,900 calories a glass. Yeah. You know, depending on how... Generous the poor is. Yeah, or, how, or what kind of gin, I guess. If yeah, you get, like, exactly. Sugary gins, I'm sure that's probably... Well, this is just straight, like, Gordon's... Might get on the gins later. Dry actually. gin. You love a gin. Yeah, I love it. Not gin. about that. Uh, number three, obviously, they're quite 
what would traditionally be seen as feminine drinks. Mm. New kind of product on the market for the fellas, okay. seltzers. Oh yeah, we've we've been dabbling the, in and this, particularly the Bud Light seltzers that you can get in Weather Spoons. Yeah, so the <laughs> I was told this is from straight from Eddie. So I don't know. He was trying to get me to booze one night. We had a, we had a run the next morning. He was like, Sam, these have got electrolytes in, so we, we're good to go here. Are they actually? Yeah, they? that's the whole point. That's seltzers, they have got electrolytes in. That's pretty good. To though. try and offset the, the hangover. The alcohol, so, I yeah, guess. That's, that's cool. But yeah, Bud Light seltzer, like a 330ml can, from the ones that you get from spoons, that you can either get them in like strawberry and or passion yeah, yeah. fruit. That, that's not important. The passion fruit one's copying. Yeah. Uh, 95 calories. That's mad, that. It's good. They yeah, taste decent. They're, four, they four, are nice as well. Four percent strength, so the same strength as like Coppersburg or something. Yeah, and they've got electrolytes, so you don't get hungover. So, they, so there you go. Don't don't say that we don't ever do anything for you, yeah. the listener. There's three low calorie bevs. If you're going your, out this weekend, fucking keep those calories in check. Yeah, get your Marv, get your get your Marv's, get your Marv's body in order. <laughs> exactly. Summer's coming now. I might count them calories. I might get other vodka lime sodas later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. Well, we've, we've already fucked it with like 700 calories here. Yeah, probably, that. probably not. That, that was it's actually non alcoholic beer. We just had, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're having you on. How many calories are in this? Fuck those. A uh, couple hundred. Uh, I don't know. Oh, 154. There you go. Brilliant. And on, on, on that riveting <laughs> note, that is the end of this obstacle course episode. Yes. So, um, this is this was a double record week. So, we are back into our normal schedule next week, so we'll pick a topic. If you've got any topics you want us to discuss, just put them in the description and we'll have a look. Yeah, we haven't plugged that. That's true. In recent episodes. Mm-hmm. Keep the comments coming. Yeah. Tell us what you want, yeah. basically, because otherwise we'll just do what we want. Yeah. Chew your ear off. That could get ugly. And that could get <laughs> ugly, yeah. <laughs> now, we'll, we'll be asking on Instagram as well for like ideas for episodes, so um, make sure you're following us on there. And uh, thanks for listening. Yep. Yeah. See, see you in a bit. Thank you.